So, and speaking of the adaptation, I know in your book you talk about three modes of adaptation, and um, could, you, could you talk about that and maybe give us some examples of what you're talking you about? You know, it's interesting. When you look at the whole notion of adaptation in, uh, and you look at it historically, you find it's generally happened as a forced response to a difficult situation. So, for example, um, after the oil crises of the 1970s, you found many firms having to adapt, not wanting to adapt, but having to adapt. And as we looked at Silicon Valley companies, we really started unraveling these three different modes, um, deliberate, accidental, and forced. Forced adaptation is when you have no choice but to adapt. Think about a turnaround situation. You know, your performance declines, your share price declines, your technologies become obsolete. Uh, you have to reinvent yourself because otherwise you go out of business. If you think of, for example, Nokia in more recent years, Nokia was the darling of the mobile phone industry. And as we know, uh, when the smartphone came out and the iPhone came out, really Nokia was, was left in a situation that they really had to adapt and their mode of adaptation was to sort of be acquired. Um, uh, and we have numerous examples. If you look at HP, for example, in more recent years, they've split into two different businesses because, quite frankly, the business environment has changed and the original model under which they operated no longer is relevant. So it makes a lot more sense to divide themselves into two separate entities with two different areas of focus. So forced adaptation is when the market realities and your performance and situation is such that you have to reinvent yourself. Deliberate adaptation is much more intentional. It is about adapting when nothing is really forcing you in a crisis-driven way. And if you look at many successful companies in Silicon Valley, if you look at Google, if you look at Facebook, you know, just taking a couple of examples from the more recent times, if you look at Apple during the last five years, Apple could have cruised along on the success of its iPhone and iPad. Instead, they constantly are thinking about new products, whether, whether it's the watch, whether it's getting into a payment systems. They are really trying to think about new avenues for growth and for innovation and differentiation. Um, so, and then, then accidental adaptation is when uh, you, you're not forced to and you're not doing this in a deliberate, intentional way, but you find yourself in the situation that things turn out in a different way than what you expected. Let's take the example of Amazon. Amazon is the pioneer of the cloud, many would say. Um, along with companies like Salesforce, for example. But uh, they, the original idea of the cloud is that they had spare capacity because they had all this storage capacity that they used during Christmas period, during holiday period. And during the rest of the year, what do you do with your spare capacity? Well, you can rent it out to other players that have a need for it. That might be an example of sort of accidental uh, adaptation. Um, Facebook started as a, as a sort of dating um, service for Harvard undergraduates in its very, very original form. But it evolved to become, of course, as the biggest social media company. So uh, I would say these three modes are not sort of so distinct as to be separate. Of course, many times they overlap. But I think for the sake of clarity, I think we need to really think about adaptation in these three modes. And you know, we can use human analogies too. For example, if you think about people changing their lifestyle, eating habits, exercise regime, smoking habits after a heart attack, you know, they're forced to do that because that triggering event makes it necessary. Whereas if you say, you know, I'm just going to eat healthy and I'm going to keep up my exercises because I want to be healthy, that's much more a deliberate, intentional, uh, proactive approach. So then, of you know, those obviously, three, is there one that a business time, organization be should, in the should strive for? Destiny. And I don't know of any organization that says they want to be forced into anything. Uh, so I would say, um, really start thinking like a driver 
and deliberate intentional adaptation is what you want. Anticipate what's going to make you obsolete. Anticipate the technologies that are going to come along and make your product a commodity. Anticipate the customers that are going to drop you and you have to find new entities. I think any business to be successful in the long run has to think in a much more intentional, deliberate way.